Really sorry I haven't done a video in a while. It's been super, super busy around here, but I'm back on deck and we are all good to go. The dish I'm doing today is an absolute classic of Cantonese cuisine, sweet and sour pork. Sweet and sour pork gets a bad rap because people think that it's like westernized Chinese food, but it absolutely is not. Sure, there are westernized versions, but sweet and sour pork is a really classic Cantonese dish. It's also incredibly simple to make. There's kind of three elements to it. You've got your pork, your vegetables and fruits, and then your sauce as well. And I'm gonna show you a very simple technique for doing this at home because obviously cooking in a wok at home is often quite different from the way Chinese chefs do it in a restaurant. I'll tell you more about that in a while. Let's get onto the pork first. I use pork belly. Pork belly is a really good cut of meat for almost all Chinese cooking because it's got nice layers of fat and it gives you a good balance of, I guess, the fat and the meat that you want. You could use pork shoulder as well if you wanted something a bit more lean. So I'm gonna cut that up first into about, I guess, two centimeter pieces. I won't need all of this pork, obviously. It's quite a lot here. It's really important with Chinese cooking and all East Asian cooking, really, to think about how each mouthful is gonna be because often you're using chopsticks and there's no further cutting up with a knife before it actually goes into your mouth. So if you can't imagine something like that being one mouthful of food, then you really need to cut it up a little bit smaller. And that will change depending on how thick your pork belly is, what kind of meat it is. So really just make sure that you are creating mouthfuls with your knife or your cleaver. Okay, our pork's in bite-sized pieces. Very simple marinade. To be honest, you don't even need to add the seasonings to it if you don't want to. This is more just a coating, but I think that adding a little bit of extra, in this case, soy sauce, and also some Shaoxing wine, just adds a little bit extra to the dish. Now, now one of the really important parts here is the coating, because it's one of the areas where that westernized sweet and sour pork is very different from a true Chinese sweet and sour pork. Because sweet and sour pork is not a thick batter that sits around the outside of pork. In fact, you don't even need to use a batter at all. You can just lightly dust it in flour and it's totally fine. The best way, however, to do it is just with a bit of egg. And then the egg allows the flour to stick to the outside and that forms, it's, it's not really a batter, but it is a coating that's a little bit stronger and therefore a little bit crispier than just flour itself. So just whip that egg up and around and we can just let that stand for about 10 minutes before we start to coat it in the flour. So while that's happening, I'll cut my vegetables. I've just got a couple of different types of capsicum. Some red onion, some carrot, a few cherry tomatoes here. You could use wedges of a full size tomato, obviously. A touch of garlic, and I will keep that separate from the rest of the vegetables. And of course, Pineapple. This is one of those things that tells you it's a very Southern Chinese dish. Cantonese food is from the South of China and fruits are very common there, particularly tropical fruits that you get coming up through Southeast Asia. Pineapple is what's usually used in sweet and sour pork, but you can use anything else. These days, people are using dragon fruit, uh, lychees, whatever you want, really. You can leave it out altogether as well, but I like the pineapple. And I prefer to use fresh rather than using tin pineapple, although you can use that too. If you've never cut up a whole pineapple before, let me show you how to do it. First up, you take off both of the ends so it can stand up straight. And then with your knife going from top to bottom, you just kind of peel off the sides. And just watch on the inside edge of the pineapple to see how deep your knife needs to be going. And when that's done, you'll see a lot of these little eyes still in the pineapple. You just take your knife and with like a sideways motion with the pineapple in your hand if you can do it. So just angled cuts to try and cut all of those eyes out. It may look like a time consuming process, but honestly, it's just a couple of minutes. And if you follow the line of the pineapple eyes all the way up, you can actually get quite a nice pattern on the outside. And there we go. It's pretty much our finished product. Just cut through into some wedges. And then some of this central core, I guess, is a little bit tough, so you can just slide your knife down the inside of the wedges to take off some of that core. It's totally edible, so you don't need to do this if you don't want to, but I prefer to take off just a touch of the core there. And there we have our pineapple pieces. I probably only need one of these, so the rest of these can be saved for dessert. 
Vegetables cut, meat marinating. Now for the sauce. It just starts with a bit of chicken stock. You don't need too much. Really, this is just like a quarter of a cup or so. You can even leave it out completely if you wanted to or just use water. But the building blocks of the sauce are essentially some savory ingredients, some sour ingredients, and of course, some sweet ingredients. So we've got stock, soy sauce, some Shaoxing wine, vinegar, sugar, and this last ingredient is a little bit kind of optional, some tomato ketchup, tomato sauce. I will take a bit of ginger as well. And I'm gonna grate it, because with the ginger, I only want to use the juice of it. You know, that's where all the flavor of it is, and I don't want those kind of bits of ginger itself coming to the dish that will spoil the texture a little bit. Now just squeeze the juice. And that's our sweet and sour sauce. Just put that to the side, give this a bit of a wipe, and we'll be ready to coat the meat. I've just got some corn flour here, or corn starch. I'll take the pork out of this egg marinade and kind of toss it through the cornstarch. Nothing more difficult than that. Pork, vegetables, sauce. You can go over to the wok and get cooking. So I said I was gonna show you a slightly different way of cooking this in a domestic kitchen, and I will. If you're in a commercial Chinese kitchen, you generally have one burner, one wok burner where you've got to do absolutely everything. At home, we have the luxury of having quite a few. So I've got the Asco Volcano wok burner here, which is absolutely fantastic. But if you're gonna be deep frying and wok frying in the same wok, then you need to be transferring hot oil in and out. And that can be quite difficult and also dangerous if you're at home. When I'm doing a dish like this, where you are deep frying something first and then tossing it in a wok, I actually use two different pots. So I've got my wok on the wok burner. And I've also got my oil for deep frying on my induction cooktop here as well. So I'll be cooking everything here, deep frying it first and then tossing it together in the wok later. That removes the need of having to pour hot oil all the way around, particularly when you're trying to cook a nice and easy dinner at home, as well as having to wash the wok out multiple times. So we'll start on this side first and deep fry. Of course you need to deep fry the meat, but what I think is actually really good to do as well is to deep fry the vegetables. So I'll actually do that first so I'm not fouling the oil too much. So the onions, the carrots, the capsicum, all go in here separately because they don't all cook at the same rate. And I'll fry each one of those until it's just nice and tender. So I know in Western cooking, we'd call this deep frying, but in Chinese cooking, it's actually not considered the same thing as deep frying. This is a process known for vegetables as oil blanching. And what it's about is, is just cooking vegetables very quickly at high temperature, higher than you can get if you're just boiling it at 100 degrees in water so that you can retain the crispness of the vegetables. So certainly, certainly don't over blanch your vegetables in this process. You just wanna cook them very quickly, cook them slightly on the outside and then bring them out so they're still kind of crunchy in the center. Vegetables done now, and so in with the meat. We'll do that in batches too. Just until it's golden brown, and taking those out. The frying is done, we move that to one side. No need to transfer the oil, we just let that cool down of its own accord, and we'll toss everything together in the wok. The Volcano Wok Burner is great because it directs the heat to the base of the wok, which is where you need it. A wok is the only curved piece of kitchen equipment you probably have, and on a standard burner, the ring just gets bigger and bigger and takes it away from the, the center of the curve of that wok, which is exactly where you need the heat to be. The Volcano Wok Burner directs the heat to the base of the wok, which lets it actively wok fry rather than just stewing like most wok burners do. So I'll start with just a touch of oil and I'll fry the garlic first because I like that kind of fried garlic flavor. I don't want to let that go too dark. So now in with my sweet and sour sauce. Let me just show you this burner for a second. It's got the direct heat that hits the bottom of the wok. And it also has, if I flick this switch, a bigger flame ring that actually goes around the outside. You might think that the bigger flame is the one that's gonna give you the most heat into your wok, but you'd actually be wrong. It's all about efficiency, it's not about power. So watch this. If I have it boiling on the small flame and then I flick it to the big flame, look what happens inside the wok. It stops boiling. And then I flick it back to the small flame again and it starts boiling again. It's all about efficiency. So now that it's boiling, I want to reduce that so it's kind of not too sticky because you don't want it to be cloying, but enough of the water needs to be evaporated so that when you toss the ingredients through, it's not going to become gluggy. So that looks about right now. It's nice and glossy. 
So in with my pork, in with the cooked vegetables, in with the raw fruit, which is the pineapple and the tomato. Toss that together. And that's sweet and sour pork. <laughs>